Hi, this is Mark Millian for CompuMove Systems, and today we're looking at Lesson Zero in the CompuMove Lesson Plan. Lesson Zero is the lesson that comes before you actually start learning how to use the CompuMove program. It involves some essential setup that we're going to take a look at that's really necessary to have in place before we can do much of anything else. And that's why we call it Lesson Zero. It's the precursor lesson generally done by whoever is going to be administering a system um, and not by individual line workers. So let's take a dive in and see what's involved in that. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a user account. So I'm going to go to the setup menu and then down here at the bottom I've got user accounts and user levels. We're going to look at both of these things because this relates to how we create an account for an individual user and it also relates to how those user accounts get their permissions. So I'm going to go into user accounts and you can see here I have an empty user list. I don't have any users at this point. I'm going to go back to the setup menu and I'm going to go to the user levels setup. And then let's look at these side by side. If you look on the user level setup you can see across the top we've got at this point 11 predefined user levels and each one gets a name. Level zero, level one is dispatch here. And then in the vertical you can see all the various system functions that are allowed or not at that user level where there's a pip that's present on the intersection of the two. So that allows us to look at these user levels, decide what's involved. They do have a description that's helpful. But in addition to having these user levels to choose from, you can also make your own, customize these, or add on. So that comes into play when we go to add a user account. So I'm going to go ahead and say add user. And let's suppose this user's name is going to be Dave. Or if you use one of the common conventions, we'll do first letter, last name. So now we know the guy's name is Dave and his last name is Smith. Now I've got to give him a user level. Let's look at this thing. Maybe he works in the billing department. So I'm going to give him level 6. If I had multiple divisions, they'd be listed here. In this case, I've only got one. You can have a user with different levels of permission in different divisions. So now I've created a user named Dave. I could link him to a worker account. I will do that with a salesperson later. I could also deal with task roles and import sources. Those are functions that are of interest to me, but right now I'm not interested in doing that. I just want to create this user, so I'm going to go ahead and say save. And so now I've got a Dave Smith user account. So now I've got somebody who we can log in by. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the setup menu, and I'm going to go to commission accounts. I want to set up an account for a salesperson. And even if it's not a commissioned salesperson, it still gets created in the same place because all that is in there together. So I'm going to click on commission accounts and up comes my commission account list. And right now it's blank, so I'm going to say add. And up comes the commission account editor. Now there's a variety of functions here that cover a bunch of eventualities, um, including a, everything from a simple salesperson account to a driver commission account with linked vendor and reserve accounts. Those are also of interest, but not what I'm going to do right now. So let's just say that this person is named Steve Salesperson. Now, if he's a DBA doing business as, I can give him um, an account name and toggle his name type. I'm not going to do that. I'm, not, I'm going to leave it on person. If I'm worried about ultimately um, doing financial allocation to him, I might want his tax ID number. If um, I want to interface to some other systems, maybe a Calm Data or something like that for a driver account, I can put an external account reference in there and it will link back. Um, I'm going to do none of those things. I'm going to take the simpler case. What I'm going to do is go to Commission Account Type and pick Salesperson. And when I do that, it populates the commission account number, the commission group. Uh, if I've got more than one, I'll have to choose. In this case, I've only got one. Then I'm going to pick an expense category. Let's go with sales commissions. And then it's going to show me what his eligible divisions are. And if I wanted to, I could create a linked vendor account. 
um, pick a vendor group. I'm going to say accounts payable commissions. At this, for this person, I'm not going to do a reserve account. I could put in his email address. So maybe that's steve at google.com. Uh, probably not. Uh, don't send steve at google.com an email. So we can do the rest of his information. Um, but this is really what's critical. I've gotten his name in here and a person type. And I said he's a salesperson. And I've managed to get it into a division. And then I've got an expense account allocated. And so that's enough. And so I'm going to go ahead and do add down here. And then that's going to create that account. And now that account is there. So now when I go to create a quote, for example, I'll have a salesperson account that I can use. The same basic idea is used to set up commission accounts, but that's a different subject. Um, so we're going to stop now with that. The next thing we're going to take a look at is some of the setups for our trading partners and for that kind of interaction. So if I go to system setup now, what I'm going to be looking at is customer accounts and lead sources. We're actually going to do the lead sources first and then we'll take a look at the customer accounts. So I'm going to click on lead sources. Up comes the lead source list. This is a list of where our business referrals are coming from. So I'm going to say add and I'm going to go ahead and make some simple categories. I'm going to say prior move. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to say Realtor Referral. I'm going to add another one and I'm going to say Saw Truck. And I'm going to add one more and I'm going to say Website Lead. Now I've entered these categories now. I can control their sort order. If you look over on the left hand side you can see there's this up down control. So I click into the list and use the up down control. Then I can control the order and decide what I want to have on top. So let's say saw let's say website lead on the top, but let's move prior move up into the number two slot and then do realtor. So now I've got my list in the order I want, and now I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now the next thing I'm going to do is go back to setup and do customer accounts. Now these customer accounts are not for individual shipper customers. These are business trading partner accounts. These are companies that you would do business with on a recurring basis. Maybe a school district, maybe a government agency, maybe one of the military carriers. So I'm going to say new account and I'm going to do, um, we'll just make it XYZ van lines. So this is somebody who I do recurring business with and I'm going to give them an address. If we go to the billing configuration screen, we've got additional bill instructions, we can link to a lead source, we can put in billing email address. All of that's of interest too, but not really the point of this. What we really wanted to do is we just wanted to get one customer record saved so that when we go to start a job and use customer records, we've got something to work with. So the next and final step in doing setup before we can start having a look around is to set up some resources. So I'm going to go back to the setup menu and in this case now we're going to look at workers and equipment. We're going to create some individual worker accounts and we're going to add some equipment. So I'm going to click on workers and I'm going to land on the worker resources screen and I'm going to say add and I'm going to make this an individual. So I'm going to call this Roger Williams and he's going to be a driver. So if I have a linked commission account, I can deal with that. I don't want to at this point, so I'm going to make him a driver A. I'm, I could give him a driver number if I wanted to. I could put in his phone number for notification and email address. That would be worth it, but not what I came here to do, so I'm just going to go add. So now I've got him. I'm going to add another one, and I'm going to call this um, Dale Evans. And I'm going to make Dale a uh, helper. And I could do the same thing with the commission account. I'm not going to. Let me add one more. Bob Rogers. And he's going to be a helper too. So now I've got two helpers and a driver. I can toggle through the statuses. I can say show me my driver. Show me my helpers. Show me everybody. But now I've created some resources. Now it's worth to know without going too far off the subject of Lesson Zero itself, that when you're doing this setup, 
you can actually go into the commission account setup that we were in earlier. And if you add somebody in one of the worker types, for instance, a contractor or company driver, you can actually pick a worker category and it will automatically create a schedule resource record for you on the worker list simultaneously by creating a commission account. So if you're going to be setting up a bunch of contractors as workers, don't do them through the individual worker resource screen. That's only for non-commissioned entities. All right, so that's enough to get us going. Let's close that and let's do one more thing. We're going to go back to the setup menu. We're going to go to the equipment list and we're going to add a couple pieces of equipment. So the first thing I'm going to do is say add and then I'm going to say straight truck number 17 and then I'm going to click add for that and then I'm going to add again and I'm going to say maybe pack van 3 now this is whatever is appropriate for your list however you want to see it presented maybe add one more um, unit 17 sometimes people give these names it's old blue or something like that however you want it to appear on the list when you do the dispatch then that's what you should put on there all right, so then that's the last thing we need to do to actually complete the setup for Lesson 0. I'm going to go back to Setup, except now I'm going to go to Work Events, and that brings up a Work Event list. And I'm going to go to Setup, and I'm also going to do Job and Schedule Statuses. So these are two lists that have a lot of influence on how your CompuMove is going to operate. So if you look at the Work Event types, you can see we've got event types like pickup, delivery, local move, and so on. This is a minimal starter list. This list will be embellished. Pickup is pretty generic. There's probably five different kinds of pickups your company does, if not 20 kinds of pickups. And so that's not enough. That's really a placeholder. So this list will grow, but it'll grow to suit your particular mix of business. In the same way, these job statuses, we've got a very simple initial setup for job statuses with some triggers that are pretty universal. But what will happen in your organization, depending on your departments, depending on when things get handed off from sales to customer service to dispatch and operations to billing to accounting, depends on how many layers you've got, depends on how compartmentalized you are, but the use of the job statuses is critically important in how that workflow is managed and also the schedule statuses. This is another group. This is really kind of the operations department status and which status it is as it makes its way through its life cycle and how you guys choose to define your statuses um, because every company can be different and, and frequently are, then that drives a lot of the behavior in those areas. So we want to introduce these. We're not going to change them today. The starter setup that we have is fine to get going. But in the not-too-distant future, we're going to want to dig into these and start to make those really yours. So what we've done, to recap, is we've created a user account, and we've had a look at the user levels, so we have some beginning idea of how user levels are defined. We've gone ahead and created a customer account and some lead source categories. We've set up some workers and equipment. We created a commission account for a salesperson so that we can start doing quotes. So now that we've touched those things and we've had a look at work events and job and schedule statuses, even though we didn't change anything while we were there. So now that we've had a look at those core parts of the initial setup, the customization that we'll be doing, then we're ready now to carry on with lesson one which is, of course, a subject for another video. You're welcome to look over this as many times as you want. Make yourself comfortable with how to do the basic functions outlined here, and then we'll be ready to go forward with the next lesson.